Hello you guys and thank you so much for tuning into my video. I'm going to try and make this as to the point as I possibly can uh, because I don't know this is something that I, I've sort of had in my heart for the past couple of days so y'all know I had to make a video. For many of us uh, and not just trans people and not just just human beings in general we often, we often get into situations or sometimes life presents situations where we feel like <clears throat> we are alone and we need some support and we feel like the world does not understand us. Growing up, I always felt like I was alone. I felt alone at home. I felt alone at school. I felt alone in church everywhere. And I think back then, what I wanted more than anything else was for somebody who got it, for somebody who saw that, that I was dealing with real and actual st struggles and not only did not judge me for going through those struggles, but supported me in those moments. You know what I mean? Fought for me in the moments where I couldn't fight for myself. Um, I always wanted that. I always longed for... Um, a friend that would just encourage me and love me and support me. I, I always wanted that. And because I was so desperate to find allies, to find people that would listen to me, I in turn became the type of person that I wanted to become, that I wanted to meet. You know what I mean? Um, I, from a very young age, realize that, you know, if I want people to love me, I need to demonstrate love. <clears throat> if I need people to listen to me, I need to first seek to listen and understand them. And by doing that, that would create a space where I would receive support. But what does that support look like? You know, we're all, we often talk about, oh, I'm an ally to for the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm an ally for trans rights. I'm an ally for, uh, for, for women's suffrage. I'm an ally for, um, you know, non-discriminatory practices in the workplace um, and the people who suffer. Like, I'm an ally. We often talk about being an ally and we have limited to no understanding of what an ally actually means. And it always makes me laugh when people ask the question like, how can I become an ally? How can I become an ally? I mean, honey, if you're a human being who has any sense of goodness inside of you, you would understand <clears throat> that at the core of being an ally, at the core of being um, a trans ally or a trans supporter, is somebody that has genuine concern for um, the individual who is trans, someone who has educated themselves about the struggles that are faced by the community, someone who uses their privilege, and this is a big part of, of being an ally, someone who uses their privilege in spaces where I as a trans black woman like can't use my voice. And it's crazy because you never see who who your allies are until shit hits the fan. You know, in the moment of darkness, when transphobia hits you, when someone is an, <clears throat> an asshole or you're being treated unfairly, in the moment of darkness, when you are being attacked, it's not your enemy's words that you remember. Instead, it's your friend's silence. That's what stays with you. Um, and that's what, mess, that's what messes us up. Often people who go around talking about, oh, I, like I want an ally. Um, I wish I had an ally who supported me. I wish I had somebody who understood. These people are not islands unto themselves. They have families, they have people at their schools and they have people at their workplaces. But the environment has become so hostile and they're so unaccepted and unloved that they need somebody or rather we need somebody who can listen without judgment and just try and support us.
You know what I mean? That's what I did this this YouTube channel because I like I felt that I didn't have any allies. I felt like all of my friends, everybody I knew was cisgender. I only started really knowing trans people and really knowing gay people when I did YouTube. Before then, my, my entire world was saturated within the trans experience and, I mean, and within the cisgender experience. <clears throat> and I very much didn't know how to deal with a lot of the microaggressions, a lot of the frustrations, a lot of the, like, I very much didn't know how to deal with a lot of that negativity all by myself. So I went out of my way to try and find people. I first tried to be a supportive person myself and try to create um, friendships with people and in the hopes that they would reciprocate and, and give me the same level of understanding. But what always frustrated me with, with a lot of my cisgender friends, cisgender friends that I absolutely love, was their willful ignorance. Their willful ignorance in that people, liberal people, <clears throat> are sometimes an issue. In that they can, like, the craziest things will come out of their mouth. They'll say things like, oh, I don't see color. To me, you're just a girl. Um, like, I, like I, I don't even notice these things. If you don't see my color, if you don't notice these things, it means that you don't see my pain. It means you don't see my struggle. It means you have no understanding of the depth or you have no understanding of what my life looks like. I've been to your house 98 times, but you've never taken it upon yourself to come to my house and into my space and see what my actual lived reality is. So that was my issue. It's not to say like, the friends that I had in, in college were anti-trans or, or homophobic or, or they were racist or they were Islamophobic or whatever. No, they weren't that at all. They were lovely people who just wanted friends and they thought that I was cool and they did not judge me because I was trans. However, in the same breath, they didn't understand any of my struggles. And I, I had this one friend who almost would challenge me and be like, did that really happen? You, are you sure you're, being, you're not just being sensitive? So that's the experience that I had for many, many years, many, many years, where I was being gaslit and I was being gaslit and I was being gaslit and I was being gaslit. And I'll be honest, you know, like in my life, um, I have found people who, who were true allies, who were true allies, but I have an issue with even the concept of being an ally because I, like, I had this one friend and he was absolutely amazing, very supportive of my um, trans experience, was very interested in anything I had to say, would defend me should there be any, you, you know, like issue at work. And we genuinely cared about each other. He was Oh, well, when I tell you how much I loved that boy, it's words can't even describe. Like, he, he was my guy. He was, he was my friend. And what saddened me is, it's actually funny because it was him. He was a gay guy at work, and there was a girl who was a lesbian at work. She didn't even know that I was trans. And I'll never forget, uh, we were all talking about music, and I said, oh, I wish that I could sing, but my voice broke when I was 13. So she looks at me and she's like, yeah, because that's when you turn into a man. Girl, <laughs> when I tell you the entire office turned their head and they were like, the, f what? And it was funny because she didn't know that I was trans and I had to explain to her and she was so embarrassed, so apologetic. So I had these two people that were my allies. And it was funny because with the girl, uh, I often felt that she, she was transphobic within herself, but because she was a lesbian and because she liked black women, the space that she occupied did not allow her for to be transphobic. You know what I mean? Sorry about that. I had to charge my laptop. So back to the story, back to the story. 
this girl essentially was a friend of mine and because she was a lesbian and because of the space that she occupied in society, it would have been hella crazy for her to be transphobic, even though she was. So she very much at work would say all of the right things and at a very surface level treat me with um, some level of respect. I mean, we've all had that one person in the office who's friendly enough, but you know damn well they're racist. You know in your heart. And that was this girl for me. And it was interesting because I had these two people. I finally, for the first time, I had allies. I had allies. I had these two people. And I, I definitely appreciated, um, especially my guy friend. I, like, I appreciated the support that he gave me. But... Even though, like, he was such a good friend of mine, and, and it pains me to say this, I felt that his support was performative. I definitely felt that his support came from his white guilt. I felt that the girl as well. Her, her support came from the fact that she knew she couldn't be transphobic because she was a minority herself. And it also, it was performative. It, it really came from a space of, I am so liberal. I'm so liberal and accepting that at a at a um, conscious and intellectual level, I can accept trans people just as they are. But the reality is you don't, ma. You don't. You're the one who's the most problematic. So we, we have all these cis people jumping into our spaces because they're trying to gain um, liberal points or progression points. And it, it was really when I encountered those two relationships. And it, it was funny. There was another girl who I'm still friends with. There was a whole group at work that I became friends with. And we bonded over the fact that our group had a very dark sense of humor. And we would make fun of each other like all of the time. But it was so lighthearted. And then we started drinking together. And that's when you that's when you know the friendship is sealed. No, that's when you know, girl, it's sealed. Um, so there's there were these two girls in specific. Um, Jennifer and I can't say her name. Uh Marilee. So there was Jennifer and Marilee. And I just remember. <laughs> Marilee was always funny to me because if someone I didn't know would come and talk to me, you would just see her eyes like, Papo, who this woman? Like, she very much was like, why are they talking to my friend? And if they dare say something crazy to my friend, I'm about to act the fuck up. Now, the interesting thing is with Marilee, do you understand me and this girl never had a conversation about me being trans? I mentioned it in passing, um, and we never, it, it was only when, you know, the group, we were all drunk and we were all talking about how much we loved each other that Marilee and then Jennifer chipped in. They were like, if I see anyone looking at you funny, like, I, I, like I'm ready to fight for you. And it was so crazy. Like, I literally had been friends with these allies girl for over a year and I didn't even know they were actual allies because I'd gone to a point in my in my belief in myself and in my belief to overcome my own shit I got to a point where I realized that I didn't really need anybody else to defend me if a situation arised like I, I I'm loud enough and I can talk I will defend myself. So I, I didn't feel like I needed um, people. But when I realized that I had people, when I realized that I had friends in a workspace that was very toxic and very anti-me and very anti-trans, when I realized that I was covered and surrounded by these people who loved me and these people who, even though they weren't trans themselves, even though they never thought they would meet a trans person, it was just kind of like, we support you. And the gag is, if you ask Marilee, she's not the type of girl 
who would just be friends with somebody because they're black or because they're trans or because they're Jewish. She's deeper than that. And so is Jennifer. And so is that whole group. And that speaks to how it was never performative for them. It was never a performance. It came from a genuine space of them wanting to understand what I was going through. It came from a space of them working through whatever transphobia they had, because I'm not going to pretend and, and act as though everything in that friendship group was rosy and that I didn't experience instances where somebody may have looked at me funny or I felt that they said something that I interpreted as transphobic. Those definitely happened. And I, I, I saw those same friends really change within themselves, which is crazy because if, and if you know me, I don't believe that people change. I think that they get worse over time. Only, only self-aware people progress. But like, I, I never wait around for somebody to change because I'll wait forever. But it was weird, like how I met these people. They, they became my friends. They never, they never went to a single pride event. They never had, girl, they never had a single flag. They never, <laughs> they were not fake about it. There was no pretension about it. And they never announced, I have a transgender friend who's so like wise and you should, yeah, like they would save those conversations in private when we were both tipsy and be like, you know, I love you, girl. It was one of those things. So then you ask yourself, because I essentially described two types of people. I described, uh, you know, the, the, the gay friend of mine and the lesbian friend of mine that were allies. But um, essentially, I, I always got the feeling that it was performative and that it came more from a space of their white guilt. So their activism was more about themselves. And sometimes people, especially people with privilege, especially white people, I've noticed, they will, because they feel so bad about like racism and how things have happened to every other race except for theirs, um, not to say bad things haven't happened to white people. Please don't fight me on that. Please, please. Um, but I've noticed how because so many um, white people come from that space, it creates a sense of guilt. It creates a sense of guilt. It creates a, an atmosphere where they feel like, I need to say sorry to everyone. And from that is the worst kind of activism. Because essentially you have all these people, oh, we're allies, we're allies, we're allies, and they have little to no meaning or understanding of what the word even means. They just, they just uh, keep you around for token points. Um, they keep you around for diversity points. But my friend, Marilyn, I wish I could say her name because when you're a bitch that real, you deserve all the credit. Jennifer, freaking Justin, bah, freaking Justin, and he's a whole dude. He's a whole dude, was out here being an ally. Girl, I mean, and, and that's what we want. So then we have to ask ourselves, because I, I, I've gotten people ask me this all of the time, and they'll say things like, how can I be an ally? What can I do to be an ally? Don't look for it. Don't look for it. Simply treat people with kindness. And if you're really interested in the LGBTQ plus experience, there are so many documentaries, so many documentaries. You are spoiled for choice. There is a whole internet that allows you to go through, like, to, to ask all the questions. There are YouTube channels of trans women like me who have the patience, somehow have the patience to explain things to you. Start there. Start there and realize that you don't have to force things. And often when people encounter trans women, they find trans women to be very angry and upset and hurt. And they're like, geez, I just wanted to like love on you and 
you know, get my, you know, you know, pay my due and be an ally. But if you're going to be this angry, I'm out. And I'm like, girl, first of all, you enter the trans world with the expectation that every single trans woman is going to be like Oprah Winfrey, this magical Negro with this abundance of wisdom, who's going to listen to all of your stupid questions, entertain all of your stupid questions. Um, I mean, I have a lot of friends that simply don't get that they're transphobic. And it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to limit my time with you or I'm going to have to cut you out because as a trans person, the reason we're so thirsty for allies is because the people around us are often so horrible without even realizing it. Our friends that are cisgender, that are not allies, often don't respect our transitions even. Um, if anything, being around certain friend groups have made me more um, self-conscious about certain things about myself. Friends do it all of the time. Like people do it all of the time. They'll ask you what your dead name is. They'll ask if they can use your dead name. Um, they will ask you to speak in a deeper voice. Um, they will ask you to, to show pictures. They'll ask you like, why don't you just cut all your hair off and take the makeup off? And I'm just like, Y'all, y'all just do too much. No wonder we're thirsty for these allies. But my advice to you, my sweet, dear baby trans, is that you're going to have to learn in this life to cut out negative people, recognize negative behavior right at the beginning, cut them out, and focus only on the ones that, that wish you well. Focus only on those people. Focus only on those people. You will see somebody who's an ally in your life. You, you don't even have to ask, is this person really an ally? If you have to ask that, they're not. They're not. They're really not. But before we can ask them to be allies to us, let's start supporting each other. Let's create a space where trans women can be ally, allies to allies. <laughs> allies, allies, where trans women can become allies to other trans women, where trans men can become allies to other trans men, and vice versa and everything in between, where the trans girls that are stealth, the trans girls that don't have to defend their femininity as much, when they're in spaces where everybody thinks they're cis, Speak up for us, girl. The hell? Like, like we're not family? Speak up for us. And don't only stop it at being an ally to trans women. Extend your understanding. Extend your compassion. Extend your love to the gay community. Connect with gay men and lesbian women and and by saying, like, let's connect and be allies to each other. Let's first build this community up before we go ask for sugar next door. We are too thirsty. We are, we are too thirsty for the neighbor's sugar. Let's first sweeten ourselves with love, compassion, understanding. Let's first learn to be allies to ourselves before we even expect another trans girl to be an ally to me. And what does it look like to be an ally? What does it look like? <clears throat> because I've seen so many trans girls, especially trans girls. It's more, it's more with us, not really the men. Y'all, y'all are my unproblematic faves. But I've seen us do these horrible things where we're almost harder on other trans girls. Like, you dare find out a oh, girl is trans. You're almost harder on her because it reflects how hard you are on yourself. It really reflects that. It speaks at a core level. Uh, you know, we, we call each other names. We call each other brick-faced. We call each other, you know, we're like, you're not on hormones. You have a beard. We, we don't respect each other's transitions. We minimize each other's pain. 
And we are quick to punish whenever a trans girl embarrasses the community, AKA Sasha Shaw. Uh, I'll be honest with that trans girl, like I've watched her videos and like, I, I understand she's very, very decisive, but your ass knows damn well if you're a black trans woman watching this angry woman spew out all this hate, you know where it comes from because there have been moments where I've been angrier than Sasha. There have been moments when I've been angrier than all these other girls. I want us to start looking at ourselves with love and compassion and stop you know, projecting what we want onto other trans women. Don't tell a girl she needs FFS. Are you going to help her pay for the FFS? Okay, then don't, then say nothing. Because you're busy trying to finance your own surgery. Now you want to talk about somebody else's. You're busy struggling. You know what I mean? First, be an ally to yourself. Love yourself. Don't worry about what these other people are up to. Then, then you go and you start being an ally in your community. You be an ally in your community and you understand other people's pain. And then you can start expecting or wanting allies from outside of the trans community. But don't lose hope. Look, I know a lot of my videos, I, I put it all on us. I put a lot of pressure on us. I put a lot of pressure on us to be better because I believe that we're worth it. I put a lot of pressure on us to be kinder to ourselves because I understand that this world's going to mess you up. Girl, you, you can't be out here agreeing with the haters. It's bad enough that so many people hate you. You can't start hating yourself and you can't bring that hate into the community. And you show no, cannot bring that hate into like the greater LGBTQ plus community. Let's begin from a point of love. Let's begin from a point of loving and healing our own pain. And I really believe that's where everything starts. That's when you start to see the allies in your life. <laughs> like, um, clearly I'm talking too much. Um, I hope this video made sense and I just want to send so much love, support um, to all of you guys. You guys mean the absolute world to me. Like, quick mental health check-in. I'm still dealing with a lot of, of heavy, heavy stuff, but I'm in a much stronger and better place. Um, and these videos are, are just as important to me as they are to you because in those moments when I feel at my lowest, I turn the video back on and it's kind of like me reminding myself to be like, girl, but you know this, you know this, you know this. So I love you so much and I hope to see you again in my next video. <laughs> All right. Bye.